They came to a stream which twisted and tumbled between high rocky banks, and Christopher Robin saw at once how dangerous it was. Just the place, he explained, for an ambush. What sort of bush? whispered Pooh to Piglet. A coarse bush. My dear Pooh, said Owl in his superior way. Don't you know what an ambush is? Owl, said Piglet, looking round at him severely. Pooh's whisper was a perfectly private whisper, and there was no need. An ambush, said Owl, is a sort of surprise. So is a gorse bush sometimes, said Pooh. An ambush, as I was about to explain to Pooh, said Piglet, is a sort of surprise. If people jump out too suddenly, that's an ambush. Said Al. It's an ambush, Pooh, when people jump at you suddenly, explained Piglet. Pooh, who now knew what an ambush was, said that a gorse bush had sprung at him suddenly one day when he fell off a tree, and he had taken six days to get all the prickles out of himself. We're not talking about gorse bushes, said Owl a little crossly. Well, I am, said Pooh. They were climbing very cautiously up the stream now, going from rock to rock. And after they had gone a little way, they came to a place where the banks widened out at each side, so that on each side of the water there was a level strip of grass on which they could sit down and rest. As soon as he saw this, Christopher Robin called, Halt! And they all sat down and rested. I think, said Christopher Robin, that we ought to eat all our provisions now, so that we shan't have too much to carry. Eat all our what? said Pooh. All that we've brought, said Piglet, getting to work. That's a good idea, said Pooh, and he got to work too. Have you all got something? asked Christopher Robin, with his mouth full. All except me, said Pooh, as usual. He looked round at them in his melancholy way. I suppose none of you are sitting on a thistle by any chance? I believe I am, said Pooh. Whoa! <laughs> he got up and looked behind him. Yes, I was. <laughs> I thought so. Thank you, Pooh. If you've quite finished with it, he moved across to Pooh's place and began to eat. It doesn't do them any good, you know, sitting on them, he went on as he looked up munching. Takes all the life out of them. Remember that another time, all of you. A little consideration, a little thought for others, makes all the difference. As soon as he'd finished his lunch, Christopher Robin whispered to Rabbit, and Rabbit said, Yes, yes. Of course. And they walked a little way up the stream together. I didn't want the others to hear, said Christopher Robin. What so? said Rabbit, looking important. It's, um, I wondered, it's only, um, Rabbit, I suppose you don't know. What does the North Pole look like? Well, said Rabbit, stroking his whiskers, well, now you're asking me. I did know once, only I've sort of forgotten said Christopher Robin carelessly. But it's a funny thing, said Rabbit, but I've sort of forgotten too, <laughs> although I did know once. I suppose it's just a pole stuck in the ground. Or sure to be a pole, because of calling it a pole. But if it's a pole, well, I should think it would be sticking in the ground, shouldn't you? <laughs> because there'd be nowhere else to stick it. Yes, that's what I thought. The only thing, said Rabbit, is where is it sticking? That's what we're looking for, said Christopher Robin. They went back to the others. Piglet was lying on his back, sleeping peacefully. Roo was washing his face and paws in the stream, while Kangaroo explained proudly that this was the first time he had ever washed his face himself. An owl was telling Kangaroo an interesting anecdote full of long words like encyclopedia and rhododendron, to which Kangaroo wasn't listening. I don't hold with all this washing, grumbled Eeyore. This modern behind-the-ears nonsense. What do you think, Pooh? Well, said Pooh, I think... But we shall never know what Pooh thought, for there came a sudden squeak from Roo, a splash, and a loud cry of alarm from Kanga. So much for washing, said Eon. Roo's fallen in, cried Rabbit, and he and Christopher Robin came rushing down to the rescue. Look at me swimming, squeaked Roo from the middle of the pool, and was hurried down a waterfall into the next pool. Are you all right, Roo, dear? Yes, said Roo. Look at me. And down he went, over the next waterfall, and into another pool. Everybody was doing something to help. Piglet, wide awake suddenly, was jumping up and down and making 
Oh, I say. Noises. I was explaining that in case of sudden and temporary immersion, the important thing was to keep the head above water. Kanga was jumping along the bank, saying, Are you sure that you're all right, my dear? To which Rue, from whatever pool he was in at the moment, was answering, Look at me swimming! Eeyore had turned round and hung his tail over the first pool into which Rue fell, and with his back to the accident was grumbling quietly to himself and saying, All oh, this washing... But catch on to my tail, little Roo. You'll be all right. Crystal Robin and Rabbit came hurrying past Eeyore and were calling out to the others in front of them. All right, Roo, I'm coming. Get something across the stream, lower down, some of you fellows. But Pooh was getting something. Two pools below Roo, he was standing with a long pole in his paws and Kanga came up and took one end of it. And between them, they held it across the lower part of the pool and Roo, still bubbling proudly, look at me swimming, drifted up against it and climbed out. Did you see me swimming? Squeaked Roo excitedly while Kanga scolded him and rubbed him down. Pooh, did you see me swimming? That's called swimming, what I was doing. Rabbit, did you see what I was doing? Swimming. Hello, Piglet, what do you think I was doing? Swimming. Christopher Robin, did you see me? But Christopher Robin wasn't listening. He was looking at Pooh. Pooh, where did you find that pole? Pooh looked at the pole in his hands. I just found it, he said. I thought it would be useful. I just picked it up. Pooh, said Christopher Robin solemnly, the expedition is over. You have found the North Pole. Oh, said Pooh. Eeyore was sitting with his tail in the water when they all got back to him. Tell Roo to be quick, somebody, he said. My tail's getting cold. I don't want to mention it, but I just mention it. I don't want to complain, but there it is. My tail's cold. Here I am, squeaked Roo. Oh, there you are. Did you see me swimming? Eeyore took his tail out of the water and swished it from side to side. As I expected, he said. Lost all feeling, numbed it. That's what he's done, numbed it. But as long as nobody minds, I suppose it's all right. Poor old Eeyore. I'll dry it for you, said Christopher Robin, and he took out his handkerchief and rubbed it. Thank you, Christopher Robin. You're the only one who seems to understand about tails. They don't think that's what's the matter with some of these others. They have no imagination. A tail isn't a tail to them. It's just a little bit extra at the back. Never mind, Eeyore, said Christopher Robin, rubbing his hardest. Is that better? Oh, it's feeling more like a tail, perhaps. Belongs again, if you know what I mean. Hello, Eeyore, said Pooh, coming up to them with his pole. Hello, Pooh. Thank you for asking, but I shall be able to use it again in a day or two. Use what? said Pooh. What we're talking about. I wasn't talking about anything, said Pooh, looking puzzled. My mistake again. I thought you were saying how sorry you were about my tail being all numb, and, and could you do anything to help? No, said Pooh. <laughs> that wasn't me, he said. He thought for a little while, and then suggested helpfully, Perhaps it was somebody else. Well, thank him for me when you see him. Pooh looked anxiously at Christopher Robin. Pooh's found the North Pole, said Christopher Robin. Isn't that lovely? Pooh looked down modestly. Is that it? said Eeyore. Yes, said Christopher Robin. Is that what we were looking for? Yes, said Pooh. Oh, said Eeyore. Well, anyhow, it didn't rain. They stuck the pole in the ground, and Christopher Robin tied a message to it. North Pole, discovered by Pooh. Pooh found it. Then they all went home again. And I think, but I'm not quite sure, that Roo had a hot bath and went straight to bed, but Pooh went back to his own house, feeling very proud of what he'd done. Had a little something to revive himself. <laughs>